Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back. This is going to be our second video on uh, the new robot called Grabby. And we have 10 puzzles down here, FTC Grabby. We're not really going to solve the puzzles uh, through these videos. We're just going to give you an idea of what uh, Grabby can do. So let's go back to where we were. We're going to go back to the first one. Um, and um, we'll just zoom in a little bit on our code so that we can see the framework a little bit better. Okay, let's just slide it over a little bit. <clears throat> so what uh, we did the first time was we looked at this perpendicular wheel here that allows us to slide sideways and then if we combine it with the two motors that are there on the wheels right now, the left and the right, it'll make it, it'll allow us to go on angles. But what I want to talk about today is the uh, grabber, good name for it, that's on the front of the robot. So it doesn't uh, really pick it up. It sort of pins this sky stone to the robot uh, with the arm goes up, puts it over top, arm goes down, pulls it in a little bit, and then it can drive around with it there and, and drag it to where it needs to go. So we're going to look at that for a little bit. So um, first off, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so this is a little bit easier to see, I hope. So there's a servo, a small motor, that's going to control this arm. So it's not like the bigger motors that are controlling the uh, the two sets of uh, drive wheels and then the sideways uh, wheel that we have in the middle there. So when we go up to uh, actuators and DC, we'll see that we have our regular ones that we had, but we also have um, this one called servo now. So I want to take a quick look at some of these. Uh, the one that we'll probably use most often, although we may not do it so much today, is this one that sets minimum and maximum values for the grabber and there's lots of good reasons on a real robot why you might want to do that in terms of things that might hit and so forth uh, we're going to just ignore that for today and what we're actually going to use is setting um, the grabber to a target position so we're going to grab that and we're going to put it down here where it says the code so zero is the position that's in now and if i didn't know that i could test it out and see it didn't do anything so that unless it's broken that's kind of what it does so let's test it a bit so zero is the minimum that's its starting point and one is the maximum and i'm just going to do 0.5 so we can see that it actually does move so i'm going to click on here and then you can see it, it goes up now what i'm going to do today is i'm going to actually drive it forward and grab this thing and then move with it so we can see that it does work and I'm pretty sure, looking at it, just eyeballing it, that that's probably not high enough. So um, let's uh, put in 0.8. And we'll test it out later on to make sure that that's the case. So there we go. It lifts it up. So that's that's it's got to be close to being high enough because the only thing I can go higher is another two-tenths um, with the servo turning in that direction. So it's going from, like, <clears throat> from uh, 0 to to one as I say so so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna now we're gonna drive it forward we're gonna grab this and, and see how that works so uh, as you know we're gonna drive forward we need to actually have one of the drive motors uh, initialized as being in reverse because of the way they're set up if you haven't seen that before you can see that again or you can see it for the first time I guess in the very first video that we did in the series Anyways, uh, now we need to power those two motors. So we're going to go in here and we're going to grab them. And we'll just test it out to see what happens. So there we go. It lifts it up. Oh, I don't know if you noticed that. I'm going to point that again. So it pushes it because it took, in the length of time it's trying to lift this up, the robot's already moving. So there actually needs to be a little bit of slowing down taking place here so that this grabber can get up into the target position so if you've been with us before you know in most cases we will use there are other ways to do it but we're going to use a sleep block now i don't actually know um, how long it's going to take to lift it up let's try it and see okay so that was too long so it just sat there for a little bit so let's try half of that 
we'll save a half a second so we'll give it a try so there it goes that's great so typically what we'd want to do is drive for a little bit and then stop it so we'll put another one of these um, sleep blocks in after here and then another one of the drive motors where we turn the motors off and if you didn't know uh, one is the maximum value you can get zero is no val no power going into it which would not surprisingly cause it to stop and so there we go so so let's see how that works set it okay so it's going a little too far so let's let's actually just uh, change the power a little bit to make it a little bit easier it gives us a little bit more leeway in terms of how far it's going to go because it, it doesn't actually have to go very far if it goes on that plate it's going to open the door and it's it's not what we want. okay so to me that looks pretty good and i bet if i drop down this arm grabber uh, it'll actually um, grab onto it so let's do that so we'll duplicate this one and we'll set the position to I'm going to set it to zero because I know that's going to be as far as it can go so let's see how that works and away we go again perfect perfect and now just to demonstrate that it's actually got a grip on it we're going to get it to slide sideways so we'll put another um, duplicate we'll, we'll put another um, sleep block in here because if I don't do that um, then it may start to move while it's trying to do this putting the grabber down in position and then I will put in a DC motor block which is going to let me drive it to the right but I've got to change it from that motor which I don't want to the sideways motor so that was the first video that we did and I'm going to put another sleep block in there uh, which is making my code get kind of long um, and to just to help me out a little bit since I'm not going to use this and I know I'm not going to use this I'm going to delete um, that that loop and then I'll turn the power of that motor off so it stops going sideways I just don't want it to keep going uh, to the wall so I'll, I'll set that to zero so We'll test it out and then we'll recap here a little bit. So there it goes, grabs it, and then it moves to the side and then it stops. Now in this particular case, the idea would be just to drive it forward and drop it onto this plate and then move off and go through the gate while because putting something on this pressure plate will cause the gate to open. So just to recap, <clears throat> so we've set the left drive motor to reverse so that the robot will go forward. I'll just demonstrate what happens if we don't do that. So I'll I'll just uh, disable that and then we'll test it out. So here's what happens. It just spins. Okay. So it's, 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 it's going crazy a little bit there. So this, and that's because the two motors have to spin in the same direction. And right now they're spinning in opposite directions unless I reverse the left one. And again, I mentioned that that was something we did from the very first one. So now I'm going to set the target position of the grabber so that it's got enough clearance to grab that uh, block the stone and I need to give it a little bit of time to do that so this sleep block if you don't recall basically what it does is it's going to delay going to the next block which is the power block for half a second or 500 milliseconds which is the same if I don't do that the computer is so fast it's going to go through that uh, and not give the grabber a chance to get into position not get high enough and it'll bump the, the stone so then I'm going to drive forward uh, after I've raised the grabber and I put 500 milliseconds, which I know has got me like right next to it so I can grab it. And then I'm going to stop that and then I'm going to put the grabber down. Now stopping will stop right away, but putting the grabber down, it actually takes a little bit of time to do that. So I want to once again delay going to moving sideways until half a second has passed half a second we tested it out gives us enough time to put the grabber down okay and then uh, once the grabber is down at this point then we're going to tell it to drive sideways because we were going to go somewhere although in this case it really doesn't make any difference I just wanted to prove that we could actually we do actually have it gripped and uh, it's it's part of that and obviously of course we would continue if we we're going to do this I mean, in this particular one, we could just push it onto the power plate, then go around and go through the gate to the flag, 
which would be the fun of the song. Actually, what's really a lot of fun is when you drive it um, uh, and it hit the gate or the fence with the stone still in there um, and it pops up into the air and lands. I did it once where it popped up in the air and landed on the plate and opened the gate, but uh, that was so unexpected I didn't have my robot react to it. So there's the code. Uh, it works. You now know pretty much all you need to know about how to use Grabby, both the wheel that slides, makes it go sideways, and the grabber that can grab the sky stone. Right now, that's the only thing in it that we can grab. So, um, although I haven't tried to grab the walls, I don't know what would happen there. If it was a real robot and we grabbed the wall and kept motors moving, it would burn out the motors, but that's not going to happen here, I don't think. In any case, uh, I hope you've learned a little bit about Grabby, our newest robot. Uh, if you didn't see the uh, video on how to make it go sideways, we've covered most of it here, but you could take a look at that because it also talks about making it go on an angle and going on an angle and then going straight sideways. So interesting stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, there will be more changes coming in the near future, but uh, if you do have any comments, if you do have any suggestions, you can please let us know. You can contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. And um, we would love to hear what comments you have on our FTC SIM. So thanks and stay tuned for a new video coming soon.